I just wanted to talk real quick about thermal imaging, uh, especially how it relates to Teslas and electrical like that. Uh, there's been talk on the Tesla Motor Club forum about this and thought I would kind of go over what I use and how it's helped me. So I use a FLIR 1. This is a thermal imaging camera. Uh, this is the Android version. I have an Android so I don't have the iOS version but they do have that for those iPhone folks. Um, so once you take off the sleeve there's the package. You can just open that up and inside you have spacers for the bottom of your phone. You have a little protective case obviously the camera and then underneath you have a charging cable and a little lanyard for the cover so all that together let's set that aside kind of go over this so <clears throat> the nice thing is is the micro USB is actually very long and it does come with spacers so that you can put spacers on this so that it aligns to your phone and doesn't kind of wobble around. Um, so those are an option you can look into. Uh, I don't use them. But also there's the case that it comes with. It just kind of snaps right in. Sits actually in there pretty tight. Um, in case you're taking it out anywhere, you can just kind of store it like that. Uh, the camera itself does have the thermal imaging camera here and it has a standard camera. That's the cool thing with FLIR is they overlay the two so you can actually see thermal imaging with the lines of a normal camera. Um, what else? You have your charging port on this side and your on off switch here. So first thing to do on your device is to download the app which is just called FLIR 1. So you can open that and that will say please attach your FLIR 1 and turn it on. So we will go ahead and just plug this right in and turn it on. It's right over here. And there it goes. So it actually just shows you what currently is. So actually, funny thing, you can see I have my Surface Pro 3 right there. And the Surface Pro 3 is a little warm on one side, uh, kind of interesting. And then there is my TV, so you can see the bottom is obviously a little hotter, and then up top is cooler. Um, and you can do it either way, horizontal or vertical. Um, keyboard and whatnot, you can see here my machine's down there, it's getting pretty toasty. Those are actually, the red is... Uh, right above the video card so that's probably what's pumping that out but anyway so with this there are several modes you can do photo video panoramic time lapse I haven't played around with panoramic or time lapse uh, I will do a video which I'll kinda edit together with this one just so you can see it um, there's all different kinds you can do here um, just to show heat you can do like super contrast arctic lava normally I stick with the rainbow or the contrast just to see it but you can do a setting coldest and hottest too so everything will be grayed out on either one of those coldest cold part will be blue hottest hot part will be red so there's a couple other cool things there we can go back uh, take a picture obviously so when you do take a picture it will save this and then what you can do which is kinda of fun is if you pull up and down on that picture you can actually see um, what's the standard picture would look like with if you took it with like your phone. So that's the nice thing with FLIR since it has the two cameras, it is overlaying the two in this, so that's how you can kind of see the definition on the lines. Um, which you see just the standard image, and then you can just let go of it and it'll go back to showing you the thermal. Same thing, scroll down or up, either way. Fortunately you can only do that with pictures though. You cannot do that while you're live in the app, or at least it doesn't let me do that. So there's that. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the rundown on this. Um, it's worked out great so far and it's really actually helped me with the uh, hot water heat pipes ha having the house to see where those are being ran. Uh, you can sometimes see electrical through the walls just based off heat, all that kind of stuff. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at what the Tesla looks like versus an ICE car. I got home and my buddy just got here and we both actually drove pretty equal distances. So let's go ahead and check out the comparison. Okay, so now we're doing video on the FLIR. You can see I just pulled in with my Tesla. You can kind of see how it looks. Obviously, wheels are going to be pretty hot. Roof of the car is going to be pretty hot. Uh, mirrors are actually really cool. Um, but let's go ahead and take a closer look. So here you can see, I'm getting 108, 109 on the tires and then the headlights where the LEDs are you can see those are mm, in the hundreds again I parked outside so it's kinda of to be expected the front of the car pretty cool and there's the hood Again, I kind of expected that. There's the front windshield. You can see up here where the autopilot camera is about 110, 111. Under that, though, I do have my dual channel Blackview 650 front and rear dash cam, so that might be generating a little heat, too. Those are kind of known for that. Um, oh, my lights went off. So here you can kind of see the rest of the car. I'll just kind of walk around it. Uh, door handles are going to be warm on mine because they are black. They're not the chrome, but even the chrome gets pretty toasty. You can actually see my reflection. That's funny. In the glass. So. I mean, even the wheels are really starting to cool. You can actually one thing to notice is I don't really use my brakes that much, and you can see those are a lot cooler just through the spokes on the rims there. Let's take a look around the back. I mean, it's not. Not a bad temp. Obviously, windshield's going to be a little hotter. Um, so yeah, and then let's see if we can't get anything under the car. That's a little trickier. Those are actually the wheels. Under the car is actually pretty cool. Only in the 90s. And it's about 90 outside anyway, so... So now let's go ahead and check out my friend's ICE car. So here's his. And his brakes are actually pretty cool too. But I mean, obviously the tires. But that's where the big difference is right there. So being ice car that whole hood's gonna heat up and I mean it's it's 120 on the surface and actually he parks in a garage so at work so a lot of that's probably just coming from his 20 minute or so drive so like that's like 120 at the hot spot and then up front in the grill you have 150s Ooh, that's toasty but I mean, the rest of it's not not bad at all. Typical what you'd expect to see. Um, pretty handy tool, because as you can see, let's go look at my uh, wire here. So currently my car is not charging. So you can kind of see where the wires go, what's hotter. Actually, they kind of go up here and then go across. Uh, it's kind of cool to see exactly where everything's going, but let's go ahead and plug this in 
and see if this wire gets hot or not. see here pretty cool so I'm gonna just let this charge for five ten minutes come back check it out and see what it got up to but as you can see right now I think it's pretty pretty cool the handle is no longer blue well, I guess it is handles up to like 92 okay so the car has actually been charging for probably 20 30 minutes now and you can see definitely the cord has heated up but within reason I mean it's 98 97 uh, the handle over here a little bit closer to a hundred but I mean even then Holding it, it, it's not hot. I mean, I've been to some superchargers that are like, burn you hot. This one's not bad at all. Nothing around here is very warm. Um, let's see. Here you can see my cable. I, it's kind of draped right now. I parked funky just so I can be able to get on both sides of the car to film this. But you can see how that's kind of hanging. And... Uh, here we did use really thick drywall that's like fire rated so you can't really see it too much up there but the cord just kind of runs along the middle there and then up and over uh, you can actually see though up there the weak points in my insulation job but anyhow um, there you can kind of see how that looks it's kind of a cool tool to uh, be able to track what's hot, what's not, where you have energy and efficiencies. So yeah, hopefully that helps. If you have any questions with it, just let me know and I'm happy to answer anything I can. Um, I still have pretty limited use with it, but I have used it quite a few times. So just let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'll probably use this next time I go supercharging and make a quick video there just so you can kind of see what the temps look like. I can already tell you they're going to be a lot hotter just because it's pumping out a lot more electricity, but it's kind of cool just to see it anyway. So yeah, thanks!